lovelies, it's me, Michelle Visage, with another episode of Whatcha Packin'? We are here with CBUS's own, the one and only, Miss Nina Wells! Hi, Michelle. CBUS, for those of you who don't know, is short for Columbus. Columbus, yeah. Columbus, the OH Columbus 10. Yeah, You're here, Nina. I'm here. Now, y'all, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't know Nina because I've worked the, her house club a few times and yeah. love Nina West. But uh, Nina's been on her own journey, and what I loved was being able to see somebody who I knew. And it's been there before I knew Bianca, and I knew a few other people, mm -hmm. so it's been really fun for me to watch a friend go through her own journey. There's Whew. nothing that I could do to <laughs> change it, make it better, right. or make it worse. Right. The journey was, it was my own. on you. It yeah, really it was. was. Yeah. But you have auditioned nine times? Nine, nine strenuous, aggravating, arduous times, yeah. What did you learn to do different for all the kids that have auditioned a lot or looking to audition? What do you give them as a piece of advice because it took you nine times to get it right? I think, you know, uh, the, the, the packet's pretty similar every year with, uh, obviously, as the show grows, a lot of adjustments, right? So, um, when I first started auditioning, I was so focused on having a really produced, polished video edit. And uh, then I started, to, when I wouldn't get the call, I would think about, oh, well, I need to do this, or I, I, there, there's a formula, which there's no formula. Right. <laughs> there is no, there is no formula. And I still thought that. And then uh, finally, season 10, I really felt I gave a solid audition tape. And then I went back and I watched it and I was like, oh, here's some things I would adjust. My Snatch Game audition was a wreck. My, um, which I did, I did one of my characters in my 10 audition for you, essentially, because I did Leah Remini, right? <laughs> who, I'm, who I'm obsessed with. <laughs> yeah, well. Minorly obsessed with. Good obsession. <laughs> um, and then I recognized uh, some of my flaws in my audition tape and I saw the opportunity to really present me and be myself and not, and not put on in the tape and not, try to give them anything other than myself and be really authentic. And for someone who's been doing it as long as I've been doing it, I found a, I had a really hard time trying to figure out what that was. Yeah, because right? Nina, you do what a lot of the other kids do on the show, is you try to produce yourself yeah. into something that you think we are going to want. Right. Or Rue is going to want. Yeah. When really all Rue wants or I want you. is you. Yeah. And then when you did that, Look what happened. Yeah, I got it. And it's, <laughs> you're probably gonna ask, well, is it, was it, I'm sure, was it anything like you ever thought it would be? And I'm, no. Of course not. Oh, are you kidding me? It's always my question. I ask that every time because I love to hear everybody's reaction. But after nine yeah. years of trying, you get on. Was it harder than you thought it was gonna be? Hell yes. I and thought, you're an entertainer. And I'm, I'm a showgirl through and through. I work five nights a week. I do four or five shows on a Saturday. Entertainer of the year. Entertainer of the year 2008. I mean, like, what I, I live my life on stage. And I thought, oh, these there's acting challenges. Bitch, I got this. You know, and there's improv. Ooh, I got this. And I learned along the way that, and I knew this, right? I mean, that's I have drag children, right? Yes. And, and that's why I have drag children, is because I see something in someone that excites me, that challenges me, that I want to learn from, right? And so I was really open to learning, but I think I hit I hit a bump in my own road, right? And I just stopped, I stalled out. And then Drag Race happened, right? And this whole other world opened up and I was forced to reanalyze how I've been doing Nina West. And as terrifying as it was in the show, it's the best thing that's happened to me. I mean, like, I don't know if I've ever really had the opportunity to stop and look at it, right? Because I've been doing it for so long. And working nonstop, and and learning things that I learned on the runway from you and Rue, like my body proportioning and my, my my makeup, right? You know, I thought my makeup was great for me, right? It was what I thought. It was what I'd presented. It's what I could do. It's like, I'm no secret, I am no makeup artist. <laughs> well, but, also you do a specific kind of drag, yeah, which you're not selling. Sorry, the beauty. Correct. Yeah, I mean, like it's never been about the beauty for me. Right. Like I did, like, and you know, it's funny because my journey has been I. I was a comedy queen. I started out as a comedy queen and a camp queen. And then I went and I wanted to challenge myself and I did pageantry, right? And so I did that and I gave beauty, right? And I left my mark on pageantry and to never, like, you know, I did this gown that everyone has kind of identified me for. And that was like, I don't, 
I remember thinking, I don't want to be known for this. Like, I want to be known for more. You're very smart, very intuitive, very loving, very precious person, beloved by so many. And I understand that. Um, even with the critiques that I had for you to get through to what I needed from you, yeah. you were always willing and open and accepting and loving. And that means a lot because, believe it or not, my job looks like it's easy. It's not. Especially when you're somebody like you who's been doing it for 125 years. <laughs> you're, you're known throughout the country for, for giving to society, giving back to the community, yeah. for being a diehard professional. I watch you. Um, when I come see you and your drag mother and Virginia and and watch you perform and it's with such joy But on the main stage of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm just looking for something different. Yeah, what I learned was And I think this is really important for everybody who's watching who wants to be a part of this is I learned um, and it was about episode three, which is uh, which was the televangelist challenge mm -hmm. um, And I felt really confident because it was an improv challenge, but then I my runway which is, is, is was the fringe I was I loved, but I was like I just don't know if it's elevated enough. Um, and then we got to the fourth, and I started to really hear if it wasn't my critique, it was everyone else's critique. What we're looking for, and so I when I got my sheet, I thought well, I'm going to bring me. That's what they want. They ca they cast me because they want to see me. Of course. Right. My mistake was I I took a lot of my aesthetic, and I didn't elevate it. I didn't enhance. You kept it. it in the nightclubs. I kept it in, well, I also kept it in the safe Nina West world. True. Like my Viking look. I love the look. Right? Wrong. I didn't enhance, right? I didn't enhance yes. it. I should have done something more to bring it to the level of the stage that I was on because I recognized and have on all these years that this is the world's largest stage for drag. Will and you, if not one of the best in the world, any stage. Like, will you do things differently as you create looks going forward? Oh my God. I was talking to Brooklyn. I was like, I've never heard that my that my sh my shape is wrong, and thank God someone told me because right. I want to work on that. Right? And did you talk, did you know any of these girls before? I knew Brooklyn very well. Yeah, Brooklyn and I were friends. We've been friends uh, seven years before. How this. did you know Brooklyn if she was in Canada and pageantry? Then... Oh right. Yeah, so she competed for Entertainer of the Year. So I knew her. So there was some comfort there. And I tell you, that was for me who had a lot of emotional breakdowns throughout this journey, which is. Did you? Mary. <laughs> I was, Did you? Mary, I cried on the first runway. You looked at me and I was, I mean, it was the, I had some comfort with you, but then it was this whole other world. And I felt like, and the first episode, I felt like my journey was ending. I felt like, and it was so scary to me. It had Ooh, taken so. You have to pull out the interceptor oh, line. Well, you, I said it like 17 times. Ah. I was like, Ruth was saying the intercepture. Ah. You're sabotaging yourself. Well, your snatch game. I felt vindicated. You should. I felt vindicated. I felt, um, I, I was so scared to do that because it's a really ballsy, bold choice to change, especially in the middle of the game. You better believe it. And, um, you know, the success that Bob had, I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't do it to bank on the uh, ability of winning. I did it to because I wanted to show off right. my ability. Right. And especially do people that I love and admire and respect it. And I was, I knew Rue would know Joanne. I knew Rue would know Joanne. Are you kidding? Of course. And so that's why I was like, she's an obvious choice for me. Tony had looked at me and said, you are f so full of joy. You are joy filled. And I was Tony like. Tony Hale, who by the way is a genius. And that just, yeah, is an incredible genius. And it just, it flabbergasted me. And then and Miley Cyrus enough. says to me, I love you and I don't like your look, but I love you. And I was like, what is? That right there is you winning. That's yeah. what that is. Let's talk about these lovely <laughs> outfits you brought here. Don't, don't they all look, look how small that one is. That is totally my That's body That's an shape. illusion. <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk about the cap pen first. Yeah. That was a winning look for you. It was a winning look. You're Mrs. Yeah. Roper. Yeah, my, <laughs> what I loved about this look was, um, when I was walking back down the runway, I heard RuPaul say, uh, meet me for a drink at the Regal Bingo. Yes. And of course, I'm like 
like cackling. It's the only time I really laughed on the runway. It's hard not to when we're yelling uh, that, isn't it? <laughs> and it just, it brought me so much joy because I didn't realize until I walked backstage and looked in the mirror right after she said that, that I looked like Mrs. Roper. Of course. <laughs> like in that heavy, with that hair. And... People want to say Elizabeth Taylor when caftans go on, but I, or Alan Carr from, you know, <laughs> yes. Greece. I automatically go to Mrs. Roper because yeah. she was amazing. Amazing. Um, and I loved this, because I also loved it because it was like, you know, I, I just loved it because it was, it is kind of the, it's the essence of camp, right? It's the oh, essence yeah. of, it's the Phyllis essence Diller. of. Phyllis yeah. Diller. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, it, I, I was thrilled to see Caftan on our list. I was like, I'm going to rock that out. Oh yeah. I love it too. Let's talk about this middle size zero yeah. dress here. That obviously <laughs> fits me and you. Um, so if, if, listen, that, is, that goes around my thigh. Yes. I'm dressing for my thigh. <laughs> Your newly padded yeah, thigh. You know, yeah, it just goes right up it. Yes. Um, it's a little tight at the tit. What's um, she for? <laughs> this was for the chance to stand in front of the judges as the final four. But yeah, so I wanted to go with um, a really elegant um, look and I wanted to go with something that I hadn't shown you guys. and. Uh, give you soft and beautiful. True. You know, which I didn't Just do. Never got it. I never, Mary, I never got there. Bitch. Never got it. <laughs> never got it. I, I'm gonna, I will show you. I'll I will be waiting. Show you. I'll be waiting. I'm knock on your door. You did, however, get to show us this fringe. I did. Um, that was fun. I loved this look. So this look uh, was designed by my drag daughter Christian Cimarroni, um, who's a brilliant artist, um, and it was inspired by. I don't know if you've seen Zootopia. But it was inspired by daughters. Course, yeah. Right? yeah, I'm a Disney fanatic. Yeah. So it's inspired by with the hat and the headpiece was inspired by the character Yak, who is the nudist uh, uh, Yak, yeah. who, yes. and the, who checks in the people to go question the other animals. So, but I wanted to really give a really fun, crazy interpretation of Fringe. And from so hair fun. to body, I wanted to have it be really fun and flirty. And, just, and you were kind yeah, of having like, that, yeah. yeah. it was my Thorgy moment, which is so funny because season, episode one, I get the Thorgy box and I completely blow it with a pimple dress. But then I have this redemption, <laughs> this redemption with this Fringe look. So yeah, um, I really, I, this was my very favorite look that I'd packed and um, it became everything. It just was, I embodied that so much. It was so much me on that line. And you won in it. I also won that. So line. there you go. Nina, you have been such a joy, not Thanks. just for me. I can speak on behalf of all the judges, the people on the show. You're just, you just bring life and love to everybody that you come in contact with. And that says a lot. I know you're the pride of Columbus, but you are now the pride of the world. So we thank you so much. Keep giving back and doing what you do. Thank you. Don't stop. Just do it with more padding. Lifted eyebrows and better contour, okay? Does that work? I love you. Anything for you. I love you Thank so you. very much. And you look, she looks sick thing. Thank you. Looks sick thing. You look so Natural. gorgeous. Natural. Thank you so much for that. Thank you, Nina West. You. Nina West on all socials. Yeah, all socials. There you go. Thank, Thank you, sweet. I'm so proud you of so you. Much. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you all for watching another episode of What You Pack In. We will see you next time right here. Bye. Bye.